The world's biggest car wash cleans up to 300 vehicles every hour. I'll take the best package. With interior cleaning? And would you like the hand wet service? No, not for this car. Okay. Washing, waxing, and drying in quick succession with only 30 seconds for each step. Stress behind the scenes, a faulty pump. The pressure could drop, meaning we wouldn't get the volume of water we need. A stark contrast, hand washing at a family business with add-on service of dent removal. What used to be a dent is now a bump. I'm going to push it back down. And car sealing for nearly 1,000 euros, including windshield. The rainwater rolls off at speeds of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. First-rate vehicle care. Humongous, situated on a busy highway and almost always jam-packed. Mr. Wash in Stuttgart Feuerbach, Germany, is the world's biggest car wash. Here, on 15,000 square meter premises, up to 4,000 cars are washed every day. On top of that, the 110 employees clean up to 1,000 car interiors a day. On Saturdays, the pressure's on. Branch manager Frank Bockhaus and operating technician Muhammad Sain start the day at 7.30 a.m., an hour and a half before opening time. We're extremely dependent on the weather, so with the sunny conditions we're having today, it's going to be busy. When the onslaught begins, both lines of operation must run smoothly. To make sure this happens, the first stop is the technical room. Okay, let's make sure there are no leaks and no pools of water on the floor. The pressure's okay, great. This here is one of our two industrial water pumps. Basically, the industrial pump is there to recycle the water that's already been used as fresh water here in the facility. So we're not wasting it. Instead, we're treating it again, recycling it, and using it to rinse the vehicle's rims and underbodies and to supply the conveyor belt with water. With a water consumption of up to 350,000 liters per day, this isn't just environmentally friendly. It also saves a lot of money. This is our second water circulation system, the main water that we get from the city. The pressure here is between 3 and 4 bar, which is not enough for our facilities. That's why custom pumps raise the pressure up to 150 bar. Muhammad Sain starts up the facility. But before customers are allowed to drive through the rotating microfiber cloths, Frank Bockhaus wants to ensure that the car wash facility is working without problems. For this, he uses his own vehicle. So what we're doing now is a test run with a car. Everything before was just theoretical. For example, is the vehicle being measured properly? Is all the washing equipment being employed at the right time, meaning does it make contact with the vehicle correctly? Is all the equipment getting wet at the right time? And of course, will the car be clean in the end? The conveyor belt runs at just one kilometer per hour. It takes three minutes to make it through the 50 meter long car wash tunnel. Every day there's something that's not working properly. That's why we do these test runs. This gives us a chance to fix the problem before the first customer arrives. Today, it all runs smoothly. During the test run, everything worked as planned, at least from a technical perspective. And Frank Bockhaus is also happy with the result. For the first wash, that was pretty good. With more cars going through, the balance between the chemical washing agents improves. So the first wash isn't always the best in terms of quality, but it reaches the optimal level from the second or third car onwards, I'd say. Now, the branch manager checks the interior cleaning hall, which has two conveyor belts. Are there enough cloths? And are the pneumatic cleaning guns working? The first customers are already waiting in line outside the entrance. Some have been waiting for 20 minutes. When Frank Bockhaus opens the gate, the wait is over. The cheapest wash costs 8 euros. 
But the employees at the cashier's stand are trying to push the most expensive package costing 40 euros, which includes interior cleaning and waxing by hand. Will this customer take the bait? Hello, good morning. I'll take the best. With interior cleaning, and would you like the hand wax service? No, not for this car. Okay, that'll be 28 euros. A new paint job would be great, though. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you, bye. First, the employees remove any antennas from the roofs of the customer's vehicles so that they don't break or get lost. This doesn't always work. Your antenna won't come off. If you choose to go through, then you do so at your own risk. Just let you know. OK, have a nice weekend. In the world's biggest car wash, vehicles pass through a total of 15 stations. The first is a pre-wash spray, an alkaline solution of water and lye, which dissolves insect remains and pollen. Station number two, a manual pre-wash with a high-pressure lance. It has 140 bar of pressure and removes the previously dissolved dirt particles on the front and rear of the car. Employees have exactly 30 seconds to do this. At the entrance to the machine cleaning area, the employees help the customers to slot into the conveyor belt via camera. Then they scan the customer's chosen package and clean the hard to reach areas on the rear. The active foam section sprays water and surfactant agents that are also found in laundry detergents. Up next are optic sensors that measure the vehicle. The length, position, and size of the rims are also taken into account. Two pendulum rollers wash the sides of the car as well as the front and the rear. This is where the rims receive their first cleaning. Then the hood, roof, and rear are cleaned. Long microfiber cloths also reach crucial spots, such as in between the side mirrors and car body or around the roof rails. The cleaning agents play a particularly important role in the car wash process. It's basically an interaction of different chemicals. We work with acidic and alkaline products, both of which fulfill different functions. Alkaline chemicals make sure that dirt gets broken down and dealt with, whereas the acidic products make sure the vehicle shines nicely and dries off properly. Since the side rockers are difficult to clean, the pendulum rollers turn in different directions. After that, the vehicle is sprayed with a so-called drying aid. The chemicals break the water's surface tension, allowing it to flow off more easily. Next, a spraying robot removes the remaining washing agent from the car. Then, step two of the rim cleaning process with two high pressure rinsing sprays, one stationary and one mobile. A wax spray ensures that the water runs off the windows and body more easily. The last stage of the wash consists of two so-called spaghetti rinsers with cold and warm osmosis water, which is completely decalcified and demineralized so that no marks remain on the finish after drying. Lastly, the car is dried off with hot air at a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Reaching wind speeds of 90 kilometers per hour requires 10 engines, each working at 15 kilowatts. The facility's total energy consumption stands at 6,000 kilowatt hours per day, which is as much as two average households use every year. After three minutes, the vehicles at the world's biggest car wash have been washed and dried. The Melkus Auto Repair Shop in Dresden, the complete opposite of the car wash in Stuttgart. Melkus made a name for itself manufacturing sports cars in East Germany. Their models, the RS2000 and RS1000, are still made here by hand. The second pillar of the family business is exclusive automobile care. Every year, Melkus's seven employees restore around 3,000 vehicles luster, as many as the Stuttgart facility treats in a single day. Junior director Zepp Melkus is showing two employees the cars which they will be bringing back into shape. 
Here we go. So this is a private customer commission straight back from vacation. You can tell that it has seen some off-road action. Presumably, this is also how the customer picked up this scrape on the front bumper. What's more, there's some wear on the leather steering wheel and a couple of scratch marks on the right of the driver's seat from entering the vehicle. And with a mileage of 60,000 kilometers, the BMW's paintwork is no longer in the best condition. There are some resin stains and flash rust. Yeah, let's get rid of that. The next car, a Countryman, was delivered by a used car dealer. The Mini has already been worked on. And uh, as you can see here, there are three more dents in the hood. Okay. These need to be fixed. Okay. Okay. And we're also going to have to fix up the front rim here for our car dealer. This Tesla is only one month old, which is as good as new. In order to keep it that way for as long as possible, it's going to receive a ceramic coating on the paintwork for around 1,000 euros. But first, we follow Enrico Klein into the wash tent, where he sprays down the rims. When it comes to higher quality rims, which can't be damaged at all, we always use an acid-free rim cleaner. For normal rims, we can also use an acid-based product. They're more effective and also save a bit of time. Here, the pre-wash with the pressure washer doesn't just last 30 seconds as in Stuttgart, but nearly five minutes. We always need to make sure that there's no dust or sand left in the nooks and crannies that could get dislodged during polishing and then land in the polishing grease. Which could rather lead to more than fewer scratches on the finish. Now he uses a pre-cleaner for the hidden surfaces around the engine, doors, tailgate, and under the gas cap. After some exposure time, Enrico Klein gets to work with the high-pressure cleaner. Some areas require special attention. It takes a bit of practice and experience not to flood the whole interior. Turning it into a swimming pool. When you're doing the radiator in the front, it's important not to hit the engine radiator itself since the jet is strong enough to blast the fine metal slats. This requires a bit of skill. Then he turns on the water blaster's foam cannon. Once the auto mechanic has transformed the car's interior into a winter wonderland, he works the vehicle all over with a microfiber sponge. This process takes almost 15 minutes to complete. Now it's time to remove the foam. The demanding task of a car wash by hand ends after nearly 40 minutes, as Enrico wipes away the water using a silicone squeegee. Back to Stuttgart and the world's biggest car wash. In the meantime, it has gotten so busy that even the boss has to pitch in with scanning and pre-cleaning. When one of our employees just stepped out for a second, there was a big onslaught of customers, so I'm just stepping in quickly to serve a few people. I really enjoy jumping back into action, so I get to be face-to-face -face with customers as opposed to just managing. Just when the demand starts to peak, there's a problem in the technical room. One of the water pumps for the recycled process water, which transports water into the wash facility after filtration, has a leak. Its seal is completely worn out. If we don't repair this in time, the leak will get worse. The pressure could drop, meaning we wouldn't get the volume of water we need, which is something we want to avoid. In order to repair the pump, first, Muhammad Sain must turn it off. Now the car wash will be supplied with fresh water instead of recycled water. Next, the operating technician removes the pump's electric engine, which weighs 20 kilograms. The seals are worn and dirty in certain areas, and all of them have to be replaced a task lasting over half an hour. After reassembling the pump, the operating technician tests the process water filter. 
The filter isn't looking great. As you can see, it's still quite dark. It should be replaced. We have a spare filter which looks clean. Done. He attaches the clean filter, fits and secures the lid, and ventilates the whole system. Only then can the pump finally return to service. The world's biggest car wash not only offers exterior cleaning, but also interior cleaning. On this busy Saturday, customers are waiting in line to have their interiors cleaned. The cleaning service on both belts is bumper to bumper. There are 10 employees working on each line. The first worker shows the customer in and scans their receipt. The next one places the rubber floor mats onto a machine to be washed, while the windshield and cockpit are cleaned. Two more employees work on the inside doors and one more on the tailgate. Next, the employee uses a cleaning gun known as a tornador, which first sprays out demineralized osmosis water, which gets into all the little nooks and crannies. Then he switches the device to air drying mode. Soon after, four men with vacuum cleaners get to work on the interior. They must work thoroughly, yet carefully, in order to avoid damaging the seats and plastic parts. The last employee on the conveyor belt carries out the final checks, wipes down any missed spots, and hands the vehicle back to its owner. After exactly eight minutes, the car exits the conveyor belt. The 10 employees who carry out the interior cleaning spend half an hour of group work on each car. This customer is not satisfied with the cleaning results. He complains to branch manager Frank Bockhaus. It's probably a mixture of dust and residue. This customer has found dirt not only near the driver's door, but also on the middle armrest and in the cockpit. It's not really a proper complaint. No problem, that's fine. I just wondered if you had five more minutes to spare, just five minutes, but I bet your employees are very busy at the moment. Yes, do you have some time right now? Yeah, it depends though. How about this? Why don't you drive back around and we'll put you back on the belt, work on your vehicle again and vacuum those spots. I'll send my colleague, show him the parts that need attention, and then we can go over it again thoroughly. Oh, that would be great. As I said, it isn't really our area of expertise to treat plastic parts like that, but we'll manage it for you. Oh, thanks. It's back onto the belt again for the exact same process as before. But this time, the boss is personally going over the spots that were missed. This isn't the kind of thing we'd normally do for a customer, but it's a nice gesture to show him, look, maybe that didn't go so well. So we stay vigilant and keep focused on the details. Eight more minutes later, and all the shortcomings have been smoothed over. The customer is happy about the complimentary rework. Very happy. I'll be coming back for sure. That was pretty easy as far as complaints go. We're always very grateful for those kinds of jobs. Obviously, it's always more difficult to be called out because vehicles have collided into one another in the car wash or because of damage which has allegedly been caused by us. At the Melkis family business in Dresden, a full exterior and interior service, including polish treatment, costs 220 euros. That's more than five times the price of the car wash facility in Stuttgart. But here, substantially more time is spent on the service. Vehicle finisher Enrico Klein will need at least two and a half hours for this BMW's filthy interior. They don't have a special machine to clean the floor mats, so a colleague makes do with a high-pressure cleaner. For the interior, Enrico Klein uses specialized cleaning products, including a brush which reaches even the tiniest gaps. Then, the Melkis employee blows off the liquid containing the loosened dirt and wipes it all away. After cleaning the seats, Klein discovers a big stain on the left door, the auto technician gets to work using an extremely fine poured synthetic sponge. These sponges can adjust to any surface texture, removing dirt from tiny creases, whether on plastic or leather. Here you can tell by how dirty the sponge is. 
Now I'll wipe it off and then it should be completely clean. Then Enrico Klein discovers something which is not so easy to remove. Scratch marks on the high gloss surface above the glove compartment. Here you can see perfectly how the surface is clean, but it's been badly scratched over time. And time is what Enrico is now trying to turn back with the help of a micro-polish machine. First, I'm going to try using a very gentle polish, since it's only plastic and we don't want to damage it. If that doesn't work, I can always use a harder polish, so we'll see. As it so happens, the first attempt doesn't quite achieve the desired outcome. Clearly, this polish was too weak. The second try involves a somewhat coarser polish. Enrico Klein has to be very careful not to remove the clear coat entirely. The really deep scratches are still slightly visible, but I don't want to attack the area any harder. If the customer really wants it to be 100%, then he'd have to replace the panel. Here, the engine compartment is also part of the interior cleaning service. The product used by the auto technician cleans and soaks the plastic and rubber parts. It also contains Martin repellent scents. Next, he gives the paintwork another general examination. Oh, oh. here's a pretty big scratch. And another two over here. As for the small ones here, I'm confident that we'll get them out. We'll have to see about the big ones. The chances are limited there, but at least they won't be as noticeable as they are now. All kinds of tree rosin and flash rust. You can also feel that. It's pretty coarse. Ah, what do we have here? Here's a matte patch, probably where someone tried to scrub off some hardened bird droppings. And thereby destroying the outer varnish layer. In Stuttgart, it's midday on Saturday, and business is still booming at the world's biggest car wash. The high demand is also fueled by the gas station on the ground floor of the facility. The gas here is always around one cent cheaper than in other stations in the area which attracts additional customers. At the checkout, customers won't find any beverages, snacks, or tobacco products. Instead, the car wash is promoted aggressively, both on signs and through personal recommendations by the cashiers. It's a successful strategy. Every third gas station customer also books a car wash. However, currently, there's a more serious problem at the gas pumps. That doesn't look good. I'll just call my colleague to see what's going on. Hi, Mrs. Menke, do you have a second? I'm at pump 5-6. Thanks. It's always annoying when two pumps are out of service during peak time. It means customers have to wait. Mrs. Menke, thanks for coming. Could you please explain what's wrong? The mechanic was here yesterday. There's a problem with the feed and ceiling. Unfortunately, he was missing a part, so he couldn't repair it. He'll come back as soon as possible. So we'll just have to get by like this today? Yes, unfortunately. Defective gas pumps are always tricky. We sell between 40 and 50,000 litres of gas a day. If two pumps break down, then that's easily seven or 8,000 litres that we somehow have to make up with the other pumps. The result is that there are lines for all the other pumps. Another magnet for the car wash, the oil change station. Hey, how you doing? Oil change? Yep. I'll need the registration, please, and your current mileage. 165,772 kilometers. Now I'm looking up the car through the code number, so I can see which oil and filter to use. From under the car, the mechanic can also see on his computer which oil filter is needed and retrieve it from the storeroom. And from above, the customer can see on a screen what is happening below. Fill it up, please. The go-ahead for Mario Kern to fill the engine with oil. The amount of oil is shown on the computer. 
It says 8.3 liters. I'll fill that up and then we'll start the car. Transparency is key, even with regard to the filling volume. Your oil level is now at the maximum. And the customer is satisfied. If I had the same service done at VW, for example, it would have cost over 400 euros. Here it's only 99 euros 90, which I think is really good and cheap. The oil change only lasted a quarter of an hour. If the customer would have had his air filters changed as well, he would not have paid for the extra work done, only for the materials. Less satisfied, however, were a couple of customers up above at the car wash. This means extra work for branch manager Frank Bockhaus. We've just had two complaints from customers about their rims, so what we always do in that case is take a sample of the detergent to check that the concentration is right so that we can assure optimal results. In the Stuttgart car wash, rims are cleaned with two different products, one acidic and one alkaline both of which Frank Bockhaus is now testing. We have a little beaker that we fill with the water detergent solution and then add an indicator. Until the liquid changes color and subsequently becomes clear again. Frank Bockhaus counts the drops of indicator needed to determine the concentration of detergent. Right, so far so good in terms of pure concentration. What we always do now is to perform a little cross-test to measure the pH value, whether we're dealing with something acidic or alkaline. To do this, Frank Bockhaus uses a standard test strip as well as a digital meter for the sake of precaution. According to the dipstick, we're at around 13 pH. Let's just quickly check what the digital meter says, 12.8. That confirms what we've established here, which is that the pH value is absolutely okay. The acidic solution also has the correct pH value, just under one. So the car wash is not to blame for the customer's rims not getting clean. The rim was probably so dirty that the dirt got burnt into the material. We can only do so much. The customer will have to do some retouching. Now, Frank Borkhaus tests the tanks containing the detergents. We're running low on detergent here. We should replenish that pretty soon. Mr. Zein, would you come over here quickly? I'd suggest that we get a new IBC reconnected and transfer the flow before we run out. Yes, of course. On a day like today, when around 3,000 cars pass through the facility, the world's biggest car wash requires some 400 liters of detergent concentrate. Especially now during peak service, it's always important to have enough of every chemical. It would be really bad if we ran out now and the car wash stopped receiving detergent and we had 10, 15 or 20 customers waiting outside without a clean car or clean rims. After changing the tanks, Funk Bockhaus is needed at the hand wax station, where a few colleagues need to take their breaks. The owner of the car, which has just arrived, is a regular customer. He has already had his car washed and the interior cleaned, and now he would like to get his car's paintwork finish polished. He takes a short break while waiting. There's complimentary coffee, which is great. You can watch people washing cars. Everything is done quickly and the service is friendly. So you can relax and the time passes pretty quickly. This employee has 15 minutes to carry out the paintwork treatment. He puts the polishing agent onto the machine and gets to work. The wax being used here doesn't just preserve and gloss up the car's coat. The nice side effect is that it's strawberry scented, meaning that when you put your car in the garage back home and come back an hour later, the whole garage smells like strawberries. The employee can only use the machine to apply the wax on relatively flat surfaces. For the harder to reach areas, he uses a pad to apply it by hand. Next, he polishes the surface with a microfiber cloth until the car shines like new. He uses a brush to get into the grooves. The last step is the so-called cross-check 
a colleague goes over his work and makes improvements as needed. For this customer, it was a real turbo cleaning despite arriving during peak times. Since getting to the car wash, everything included, meaning interior and exterior wash, hand waxing and polishing, it's been around 30 minutes, I'd say. At the Melkis Auto Repair Shop in Dresden, a paintwork spot repair alone lasts nearly an hour. Before polishing, Enrico Klein washes the car once more using a cleaning clay. Water serves as a lubricant. The clay removes any leftover dirt particles, such as resin, tar, and insect remains, which stayed on the finish despite intensive washing. You can see really well just how much dirt there was on this part of the hood. So if we were to skip this step, then the polish would simply rub this dirt into the paintwork, and then it would be sealed off, which is just counterproductive. You can feel and even hear the difference. The biggest effect is how smooth it is here compared to here. Over here, you can hear the way my hand is rubbing it. And here, you can't. As Enrico Klein works the car's exterior, his colleague, Frank Schwarz, is getting started with the leather repair. So, Frank, yes? I managed to remove the dirty spot on the steering wheel by cleaning it hard. The only place that you need to take care of is the side bolsters on the backrest. The backrest has been worn away through entering and exiting the vehicle. Frank Schwarz must recolor it. He uses a headrest as a color sample and a black dye as the base color. To make it lighter, he adds a few drops of white and brown as a tint. He could also use the car manufacturer's own coloring agents, but Funk doesn't want to rely on them since the leather fades over time. Next, he tests the color on the headrest, rubbing it in quickly and then blow drying it. It more or less matches. To be sure, Funk looks at the result once more in daylight. I can see that it's still a tad too black, so I'm going to mix in a little more white. After Frank Schwarz has lightened the color a little bit more, first he roughens the seat bolsters. Then he sprays the color on carefully and evenly before drying it off with a blow dryer. Finally, he applies a matte finish onto the glossy surface, which also seals the color. A smaller leather repair such as this costs 80 euros. The wear is no longer visible. In the meantime, Enrico Klein has finished treating the paintwork with the clay. Next, he wants to remove the scratches from the hood. To do this, he uses an aggressive polishing agent. After 30 seconds, he pauses. With such a strong polish, you always have to be careful not to heat the paintwork too much, because then it forms bubbles, which does more harm than good. That's why you always have to feel how hot it is. The removal of small scratches is included in the 220 euro price tag for washing, interior cleaning, and paintwork spot repair. So, now there's nothing left of the scratches. They all came off. Next on the list are the deeper scratches. Enrico Klein has to apply more pressure while being extremely careful at the same time. Yeah, it's already pretty hot. It's still slightly visible, and I wouldn't want to go any further because the clear coat would get too thin at some point. But you wouldn't notice it unless you knew where to look. The matte area, where the owner apparently tried to scrub something off, is much easier to deal with. Perfect. Gone. Now, Enrico Klein can polish and seal the car's paintwork all over. Like the car wash employees in Stuttgart, he uses a machine which turns the polishing wheel in an irregular oblong pattern, 
rather than a circle to prevent the appearance of so-called holograms. Holograms are like cloud formations in the paintwork, particularly when the sun hits it directly. You can see it especially on darker cars. It looks kind of cloudy, like a hologram with strange mirror effects on the finish, which we really don't want. And this is how to prevent them. After an hour and a half of paintwork treatment, the BMW looks almost as good as new despite its mileage of 60,000 kilometers. The damage on the front left side will now be removed by a smart repair specialist. The world's biggest car wash in Stuttgart, Feuerbach. It's Saturday. By 3 p.m., over 2,000 cars have already passed through the facility. In the technical room, the water softening system must be refilled. The system filters lime out of the water so that no calcium deposits remain on the outsides of the cars after drying. The system's filters require salt to soften the water. Technical manager Muhammad Zain is filling the tank together with one of his colleagues. This is tough work. Bag weighs 25 kilograms. It's 40 degrees centigrade in here. It's intense. The water softening system needs 500 kilograms of salt every week. That's 20 bags. One in three car wash customers pays for an interior clean after the exterior wash. Customers who want to save the extra cost of 13 euros go to a ground floor area where they can find 48 complimentary vacuuming stations. Right now, the demand is so high that an employee guides customers to the different bays. Gabriel Tsakiridis is a taxi driver. He especially appreciates the fact that he can give his car the finishing touches himself. I have my car washed every week. First, because it makes me feel better. And second, this is a taxi. The customers also have to feel comfortable. Plus, it's my home, so it needs to be nice and clean. As I always say, if my car is clean, then my apartment is clean as well. It's a matter of character. In terms of cleaning the interior of his vehicle, he would rather trust his own thoroughness. This is something I can do better than anyone else. Other people don't have time to deal with all the small things. It's also fun to do it yourself. And this marathon runner's fitness shows in his cleaning. I spend one and a half to two hours cleaning my car every week usually on a Friday or Saturday. You could also call it marathon cleaning if you want. I'm actually pretty convinced that I'm the only one who spends so much time cleaning, but I like it. The next generation of cleaning fanatics is already getting started. The vacuuming hall is also the place where some customers discover that their cars still have one or two spots following the wash. Complaints like this are a case for technical manager Mohammed Sain who retouches the vehicles. This customer had some stubborn dirt, like wax or resin. So I got it out with a bit of polish. And the customer is really happy. And only satisfied customers come back. At the Melkis Auto Repair Shop in Dresden, a few smaller repairs are on the agenda. A painter commissioned by junior director Zepp Melkus will attempt to remove the damage from the front spoiler of this BMW. He picked up some damage there, but that should be doable for you, right? Yeah, we'll definitely be able to get rid of that. By using a very affordable method, actually. If you work with smart repair, then it costs 120 euros. But if the bumper had to be completely repainted, then it would cost up to 500 euros or more. First, the newly polished BMW must be covered up so that during painting no overspray gets on the rest of the vehicle. The painter also covers the front tire next to the damage and then uses some more tape to protect other surrounding areas. Then he sands down the paint on the bumper. He starts by using a 100 grit sandpaper and then changes four times using gradually finer and finer paper until he ends up with a 1,000 grit sandpaper.
Felix Löffler uses compressed air to blow away the dust from the bumper before applying some more tape above the damaged spot. Before painting the lower area, he applies primer and adhesion promoter so that the paint later bonds with the base coat and sticks. So now it's time to mix the right color. We're just going to take a look at the color code of the BMW. It's 354. He uses a special program on his laptop to determine the color components and how much he needs to mix together for BMW color 354. The computer shows me exactly how much of each color I need to mix into the pot, and I can measure it out drop by drop using the scale. Next, Felix Löffler roughens the primer up a bit more over the damaged area and wipes it clean. Then he applies the freshly mixed base paint evenly and blows it dry. Then, a layer of clear coat on top to seal the base coat. As for the edges, Felix Löffler uses what is known as touch-up spraying, which helps ensure an even transition between old coat and new coat. Now, everything needs to set, with an infrared lamp that only takes 15 minutes. Next door, Enrico Klein and Frank Schwarz are preparing a Tesla for ceramic paintwork ceiling, a job that costs around 1,000 euros and will last approximately two years. Before the ceiling, they must first degrease the paintwork using alcohol. Next, the Melkus employees apply a so-called adhesion promoter to the paintwork of the electric car. Without this, the ceiling could end in disaster. This vehicle is only around a month old, meaning the paintwork is still quite soft. If we were to apply the ceramic sealing directly, the top coat of paint could dissolve slightly. And that's something we want to avoid. So we use this adhesion promoter, which also makes the ceramic sealing last a lot longer. The adhesion promoter needs 20 minutes to set before the sealing begins. While they wait, Enrico Klein and Frank Schwarz coat the windshield and windows in two steps. The first step is to polish the glass surface to completely get rid of any remaining dirt. Step two is the application of the liquid sealant. As the liquid is massaged into the windshield, it forms a molecular compound with the glass surface, ensuring a long-term effect. This sealing on the windshield will last for 25,000 kilometers, and the rainwater rolls off at a speed of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, meaning you don't need windshield wipers anymore. Also, ice and snow won't stick to the treated glass as much. Meanwhile, smart repair expert Felix Löffler is already busy with his next project, the rim on the Mini Countryman, which is showing some nasty scuffing damage. Here, too, he tries different grit sizes, from very coarse to very fine, until all the roughness is gone and there are no more sharp edges. After cleaning the rim and taping off the valve, Felix Löffler quickly heats the metal and then applies another adhesion promoter. The color he's using for the painting is a standard color for rims, which doesn't require any extra mixing. Finally, he again applies a clear coat and lets it set using an infrared lamp. Depending on the type of rim, this kind of repair can cost up to 150 euros. A dent removal technician has arrived at the Melkis Auto Repair Shop. He's here to repair the damaged hood on the Mini Countryman. Here are the three dents. One, two, and three. Okay. Okay. We need to get them out. See what you think is the best solution. Let's see if we need to push or pull them out. We can reach everything here. Yeah. Then we can push them out. We don't need to pull them out. 
Great. It's all accessible. Otherwise, if we had to pull them out, it would have taken much longer. Uwe Mensa secures the hood using a lashing strap and a telescopic rod. Then he attaches a light to better identify the dent. This one is quite acute. It also has a little paint scratch in the middle, which means it needs special treatment. The dent technician uses a lever to access the hood cavity. First, I'm looking for where I am. Got it. Then he warms up the spot using a blow dryer so that the paint doesn't crack. Now I'm pressing to try and find the center, which isn't easy. You can see there's a scratch in the middle. Uwe Mensa now repairs the scratch. He uses a grinding paste to remove the top layer of the clear coat and then polishes the spot with the machine. The scratch goes away, but the job isn't finished yet. What used to be a dent is now a bump. It's been pressed and curved outwards. And now I'm going to push it back down until it's all flat again. Uwe Mensa manages this task carefully using a metal pin and rubber hammer. He completes the finishing touches using a synthetic pin. That should be it now. Let's go on to the next dent. It takes Uwe Mensa over an hour to get rid of all three dents. For 80 euros, the customer has a dent-free hood once again. Next on the agenda for the Mini Countryman is the tire with the repaired rim. The used car dealer who commissioned the vehicle repair has to shell out 380 euros for the car to receive a hand wash, interior cleaning, paintwork sealing, dent removal, and rim repair. But the car's value has increased by at least 1,000 euros as a result of this service. The Tesla, a job for a private customer, is now receiving a long-term sealing. A silicone oxide-based liquid is used, in which ceramic parts are chemically dissolved. This requires very precise work from the technicians. If you see any streaking here and don't get it out within 10 minutes, then they're stuck there and won't be coming out. You really have to look very closely with the light. This 1,000 euro ceramic ceiling lasts for two years. It has a water runoff effect and protects the paintwork from UV radiation, fading, acid rain, and flash rust. Automobile wellness for longer lasting value. At the world's biggest car wash in Stuttgart, business is calming down. By 7 p.m., the facility would normally be shutting down. But Frank Bockhaus takes the precaution of calling up the gas station once more. Have we sold any more washes? Then we can close, thanks. But right before the gate closes, one more latecomer arrives. We'll take this one quickly as well. A last-minute car wash. No problem, have a good weekend. But closing the entrance gates doesn't mean the day's work is done just yet. After the last customer leaves the car wash, it's time to clean the facility. A wash for the car wash, so to speak. Technical manager Muhammad Zain picks up the bits and pieces left behind by today's customers. Of course, we won't throw away things like trailer hitch covers. We'll keep them. Customers sometimes ask for them, and then we can give them back. Now it's time to examine the microfiber cloths, some of which are already pretty filthy. On one side, they're really dark, and on the other side, they're lighter. So at some point early next week, we'll have to put them in the washing machine and clean them a bit. These ones still look fine. On some of the longer microfiber cloths, the vehicles have clearly left their marks. Here you can see that it needs to be re -sewn. The seam was torn. I'll note that down. We'll have to do that first thing Monday morning. This one here is really bad. It could even get caught on a windshield wiper. That needs to go. 8 p.m. on Saturday night. 
the end of the day for branch manager Frank Borkhaus. For him, the madness will return on Monday morning at 6 a.m. in the world's biggest car wash.